Let's talk about the humanities and the language of culture. Hi, I'm Joffrey Swate. This coming academic year, come take old Western culture with me, Integrated Humanities classes of philosophy, literature, and history. I was talking to one of my sons today. We started talking about T.S. Eliot's choruses from the rock, and it moved to the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. And as we were discussing that lyric, I mentioned, you know, there's a reference in that poem to John Donne's poem known as Go and Catch a Falling Star. That reference is to mermaids. Teach me to hear mermaids sing. Or in Eliot's line, I have heard the mermaids singing each to each. I do not think they will sing to me. This is the famous, do I dare to eat a peach verse. And it ends with, we have lingered in the chambers of the sea by sea girls wreathed with seaweed red and brown till human voices wake us and we drown. When we think of mermaids, we should think of sirens. And when we think of sirens, we should think of Odysseus, of Scylla and Charybdis. And of being tied to the masts. This is the language of the West. I'm recording an audiobook of this collection right now, and today I read Andrew Marvell's A Horatian Ode Upon Cromwell's Return from Ireland. It is chock full of reference to civil war, to Julius Caesar. A Horatian Ode makes us think not only of the poet Horace, after whom the form is named, but another Horace. A Horace who was immortalized in poetry a thousand years more after his immortal deeds were performed by the poet Macaulay in Horatius at the Bridge. And then thinking of battles on bridges, well, it should make us think of so many things in our history. The shot heard round the world of the work of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And if we think of Longfellow, considered one of the greatest American poets, how are we to understand Augustine's ladder if we don't know who he was? How are we to understand the amazing Nordic epic, the saga of King Olaf, if we have not read Bede's ecclesiastical history of the English people? In what world can we grapple with 21st and 20th century thought without grappling with the romantics? And how can we read Shelley's Prometheus Unbound without having read Aeschylus, his Prometheus bound, and without knowing of the lost Prometheus unbound by the original Aeschylus. This is all part and parcel. This is how humans communicate. And we as Western Christian humans ought to develop this integrated literary symbological language. We know that people talk this way because of memeing, right? Pop culture references. We love songs and movies that do that. That's legitimate. That is how people communicate to each other. Shared content and contexts. We want the focus of our shared content and context, the focus of our language, our ability to speak with each other across time. We want that to be an integrated Western Christian education.